Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi guys, it's Silas from KitGuru and today I'll be taking a look at the Silverstone AR01 V3 Air CPU Cooler. Now as the V3 in the name suggests, the AR01 V3 is the third iteration of the AR01 cooler from Silverstone's Argon series, this time sporting Asus Tough Gaming Alliance decals to match Asus Tough motherboards. As per the typical Asus Tough colour schemes, the AR01 V3 also features a primarily black and yellow colour scheme, uh, which is actually pretty rare in today's market. Taking a quick look at the design and spec, it's pretty obvious it's not going to be surpassing custom water cooling loops, uh, but joining the likes of the Cooler Master Hyper 212 uh, with an equally budget friendly price of £32.18. As I mentioned, this being the third iteration of the AR01 cooler, you would expect there to be some improvements, and you would be correct. Although the cooler body shares the same aluminium design and the three copper heat pipes, uh, the new updated tough style fan varies in its RPM, 600 to 2200 RPM, versus the previous version 2's, 1500 to 2500 RPM. Now in theory this should make for a quieter cooler, uh, but this is something we will have to check during testing. Taking a look at the box, it's clear Silverstone are really pushing the industrial design with black and yellow accenting throughout. In the box we find an installation guide and a number of accessories, starting with the tough branded 120mm 4-pin PWM fan and a bunch of mounting hardware for current AMD and Intel mounts. A closer look at some of the included accessories uh, shows a number of pretty strange looking rubber parts. Both the adhesive pads and rubber mounts are actually a patented Silverstone fan mounting solution, which I can honestly say I haven't come across before. The cooler itself looks and feels pretty solid, and I must say I quite like the diamond cut aluminium top plate, which fits in really well with the tough industrial design. It's a pretty good looking piece of kit, and shouldn't have any incompatibility issues uh, with cooler dimensions without the fan installed at 120mm by 159 by 50 uh, so pretty standard for a 120mm air fan cooler. So let's take a look at installation. As is to be expected, we start with the backplate, which unfortunately doesn't really feature any locating threads or adhesive, so it's a little fiddly to get into place. You do just kind of have to hold it up against the back of your motherboard, and then using both an included washer and a double threaded standoff, mount the backplate to the board. With the backplate mounted, there are two brackets which need to be fixed next to the CPU socket, uh, the orientation of which will dictate the orientation of the cooler itself, uh, these brackets are socket specific though, and are held down with four thumb screws. The body of the cooler is held to the CPU with a crossbar that passes through the cooler, and then is fixed to the mounting bracket using two hex nuts. A small wrench is included to help tighten these down. I gave up with the tiny wrench and simply used a longer screwdriver to tighten these down. The fan being packed unattached also made this process a little easier, offering much better access to these hex nuts. It's worth noting that a small packet of thermal compound is included and needs to be applied before mounting the cooler, uh, but separate thermal paste was used to ensure consistency with our testing. I will say this from the outset, the included instructions are painfully difficult to understand, uh, with very small diagrams that are super super cluttered. All of the separate parts for mounting uh, being bagged together is really nice to see and certainly appreciated but installation took over about 20 minutes, uh, most of which was spent fiddling with the backplate orientation and trying to line up the tiny screw holes with the CPU socket whilst passing the threaded standoffs through the back of the motherboard. The installation process, although not super simple, wasn't impossible, but the lack of decent instructions was pretty disappointing and accounted for most of the installation time taken up with a bunch of trial and error. To Silverstone's credit, if you head over to the AR01 V3 product page, there is a lot more downloadable documentation and even video instructions, which are much better, uh, but I really think it would have helped to have included these boxed with the cooler as standard. Fan installation, by contrast, is actually pretty simple and just involves pressure fitting the rubber mounts into each of the four fan mounting holes and then pushing the tubular ends into the channels on the cooler. A number of stick-on anti-vibration pads are also included, uh, which can be attached to the fan directly. 
You do also get a full extra set of mounting pads, which is nice to see if you planned on adding a second fan for a push-pull configuration. You simply plug the 4-pin PWM fan connection into your motherboard CPU fan header, and you're away. With the cooler installed, clearance also looks really good. Uh, even with the fan installed, there was still plenty of space to utilise the closest memory slots, and as there's no overhang from the fan, even high-profile memory dims can be used. With the cooler mounted, we can move over to testing. At KitGuru, we have recently updated our testing setup and now test temperatures on the more recent Z170 platform. For CPU, we are testing with the Intel Core i7-7700K installed in an Asus Z170 Pro gaming motherboard. For RAM, we use a single 8GB stick of Guile Evo X RGB for some added bling, running at 3200 MHz, and storage is handled by a 120GB SanDisk SSD+. Powering our bench is a Seasonic Prime Platinum 650W PSU. When testing, we take a number of readings with both the i7-7700K's turbo locked and overclocked to 4.5 GHz. Uh, the temperatures taken are all delta T values, uh, meaning we actually subtract the ambient temperature from the CPU temperature. More details of our full testing methodology can be found on kitguru.net. So on to the results. Starting out with the 7700K locked in at 4 GHz, Performance is pretty reasonable, with the AR01V3 surpassing a few similar air cooling options from, say, Cooler Master, like the MA410P and MA410M, by a few degrees, both at load and idle. It does, of course, fall short uh, when compared to many of the liquid coolers previously tested, uh, but this is understandable considering its £32.18 pence price point. Interestingly, its closest competitor, in my opinion, the Hyper 212 Black Edition, still edges out ahead, uh, both at stock and idle temperatures. Moving on to our 4.5 GHz overclock, it's a very similar pattern. Although the AR01V3 does move down a space on our chart as the Dark Rock Pro 4 moves up. The gap does close quite a bit between the AR01V3 and the Hyper 212 Black Edition, with both coolers sitting next to each other. The 212 still offering slightly better performance at both idle and load temps. Noise levels under load, that's kind of where the AR01V3 falls a little bit short, which is a shame considering how well the Hyper 212 Black Edition performed in our previous tests. With the AR01V3 on our test bench at load, the noise was quite noticeable and did seem to move up and down in RPM quite frequently. Checking temps during our testing, it did appear that the included fan was essentially hitting its full RPM and kind of bouncing off of its 2200 RPM top speed as our 7700K was being cooled and then being heated back up when the fan slowed down a little. Looking at the loudest cooler tested, the Cryorig A80, there is still a bit of a gap, but when you consider the A80 not only has an additional fan, but also a much smaller and louder 70mm CPU block fan, uh, this improvement doesn't really seem quite as impressive. From our testing, temperatures are still pretty good for a budget 120mm air cooler, uh, but it's let down a little bit with the noise levels at 47.5 dPA. So to summarise, uh, for me the Silverstone AR01V3 is a bit of a mixed bag. There are a few things I found to be a bit disappointing. Uh, firstly, the mounting and instructions, not the easiest process by any means, and unfortunately it's primarily let down by these included instructions. I'm not trying to say I'm an expert, uh, but I have quite a bit of experience installing CPU coolers and have seen my fair share. The instructions did leave me scratching my head for a while though, and once I worked it out, installation was okay. A first time builder would likely have some difficulty though, and simplified larger images in the instructions uh, would make the whole process a ton easier. This being said, I quite like the fan mount, a pretty novel approach, and actually easier and less fingernail breaking than some other coolers wire approach. Equally, the mounting doubling up as a rubber isolator uh, is pretty clever. Performance isn't groundbreaking, but it's a budget solution at just over £30, and when you look at other coolers from the market, they tend to vary between £25 to £40 for non-flashy RGB options, so it sits below the middle of the pack on price. Noise levels do suffer, but the AR01V3 was really only loudest when our 7700K was overclocked. At stock speeds, even at load, noise was pretty reasonable. Aesthetically, it's quite an interesting cooler though. It may not be everyone's taste, uh, but it's nice to see Silverstone trying something new. So if you're not looking to overclock heavily and are building a system on a very fixed budget, uh, just looking for an improvement over a stock cooler at £32.18, currently it's looking like a pretty good option. So thanks for checking out this review of the new Silverstone AR01V3. 
and make sure to let us know in the comments what you think. If you're currently building a budget system, is this a cooler you would consider or are there other options which appeal a bit more? Please leave a like or dislike and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, clicking the bell icon below for notifications of new KitGuru videos. I've been Silas from KitGuru and I will see you in the next one.